My name is Jack Maynard and I'm going to talk to you about Paul Kierholm, the designer of some of the most industrially innovative and perhaps most timeless designs that Fritz Hansen has as part of our collection. Paul Kierholm was born in northern Jutland in 1929 and moved to Copenhagen in 1949 to study furniture at the School of Arts and Crafts. When he moved to Copenhagen, he was lucky enough to fall under the education of Hans Wiener. Wiener believed that furniture should be beautiful from all angles, and more than anything, the handcraft techniques involved should be visible. Let's start then by looking at one of the very early chairs which Paul Kierholm designed. In fact, a chair that he designed as his graduation project from the School of Arts and Crafts in 1951. The element chair, or the PK25 as it's now known, when we view the chair from above, we can see that he's effectively taken a single piece of steel which can be expanded to create the legs, the back, and the seat of the chair. The soft elements of the chair are created by using a single 90 meter length of flagline rope. During his studies in Copenhagen at the School of Arts and Crafts, Paul Kierholm also attended Cor Klint seminars at the Furniture School at the Academy. Klint believed that his students should always look backwards before moving forwards. Now what Clint meant by this is that effectively there were many thousands of beautiful functional chair forms that existed already. So in stepping into the new world in the 20th century, it was important for his students to be open to influences from older chair types. This idea resonated with Kierholm and we can see in fact with the element chair that when we view the chair from the side, the chair's legs expand both forwards and backwards, which in fact recall the ancient Klismos chairs. The chair was displayed in 1952, and after Cern Hansen saw the chair, he decided to employ Paul Kierholm at Fritz Hansen. Soon after arriving at Fritz Hansen, Kierholm was invited to work with this new plywood material. And in doing so, he created the PK0 chair, which took two shells, which were really curved to the technological limits of what could be achieved with plywood at that time. And in doing so, he created an incredibly sculptural chair, which unfortunately was never put in production. Around 1955, Kierholm met Ivan Kolkrestensen, with whom he created an incredibly productive working partnership, which actually continued right up until Kierholm's death in 1980. The first collection of furniture released with Colt Christensen in 1956 included the PK-22 lounge chair and the PK-61 coffee table. The PK-22 is particularly interesting because it's effectively built up from simple strips of steel. So when we see the legs from the side, we can see that the legs are fastened to the frame beneath the seat with machine screws, what are called Allen screws or Unbraco screws. Now these were very industrial components, but Kierholm saw in them the potential to be able to join simple strips of steel, much in the same way that woodworkers would use joins to create strong bonds in wooden furniture. During the mid-1950s, Kierholm also designed a number of modular sofa designs, including the PK31 and the PK26 wall-mounted sofa. And when we look in more detail at the sofa, we can see that its construction continues the idea with machine screws from the PK-22, but expands it with a very detailed upholstered construction, which is beautiful not just from the top and bottom, but in fact the upholstery within the sofa, where we see the, the same level of detail and craftsmanship applied. In 1957, Paul Kierholm designed his famous PK-80 daybed, perhaps one of his best known works. The daybed takes a very simple rectangular form constructed in leather and combines it with a plywood base which is fixed to the steel frame by using simple rubber rings. The advantage of using this form of construction was that the wooden surface could move slightly at the point at which it made contact with the steel frame. If it had been screwed in place, the chance of course was that it could be broken or it could crack. Kierholm often used an entire year on a single piece of furniture. The PK9 chair is a great example. The story goes that his wife, Hannah Kierholm, left a print in the sand on the beach, which Kierholm recognized as the perfect seat form. He later asked Hannah to sit in containers of clay in order to make molds to create the perfect dining chair form. What Kierholm then did is used repeated strips of spring steel to create the support for the human form. The fact that the chairs open outwards onto the floor draw the attention to the wider space. The 
PK54 table from 1963 is perhaps Kierholm's most simple geometric construction. He combines a cube of stainless steel to create the base section with a simple circle of marble or granite for the surface. By reducing the dining table concept to these two forms, Kierholm draws the focus entirely to the materials. To expand the size of the table surface, Kierholm developed the PK54A expansion ring made from solid maple. The idea being that the size of the table could be expanded in the most elegant way possible. In 1965, he developed the PK24 chaise long. The interesting thing about the PK24 is that it's effectively a kind of hammock chair. What Kierholm does with the PK24 is to use the friction between the steel cradle of the chair and the plinth to be able to adjust the chair. This means then that the user can adjust the chair and still be able to sit comfortably at a variety of angles. As ever, Kierholm was seeking to find the slimmest profile possible in his furniture. By using woven seats in his furniture, he was able to illustrate his fascination with the inherent strength of wicker as a natural material. The other important thing with wicker is that like leather, marble, and all the other materials Kierholm worked with, it will age beautifully and take on a patinated finish over time. There are very few pieces of furniture using wood in Paul Kierholm's collection at Fritz Hansen. In 1957, he designed the PK11 chair together with the PK55 table. When we look in more detail at these chairs, we can see that Kierholm has used this concept of strips of steel, in this case in sort of vertical columns to produce the legs of both the three-legged chair and the table. He then manages to build in an incredible sense of space and an illusion of a floating leather seat together with a ring of ash to produce the backrest and armrest really in, in one section. When the chair is pushed gently into the table, it matches perfectly the height of the table and becomes a very unified whole within the wider space of the room. One of Kierholm's later lounge chairs is the PK20, which takes a classic cantilever form, but transposes it and blends it with the form language of the PK22 to make a much lower, much more comfortable seating experience. The idea with the PK20 is that Kierholm and Colt Christensen could use up strips of leather from the construction of the PK31 and PK22. The hope was that this would make an economical form of production. In reality, of course, the time taken to produce these strips of leather and to create the seat negated any savings that were made by using recycled leather. Kierholm believed that the materials of his furniture should be the stars of the show. Although he was an incredibly innovative and ingenious designer, to his death he maintained that it was the materials and their surfaces that were more interesting than the designs themselves. 